And now, from Seoul, Korea, the world's least known great city, it's the KTLIT.com and 10 Magazine Book Club, Korean Literature Podcast. We get literature confused in two different languages, with your hosts, Barry Welsh and Charles Montgomery. <clears throat> Hello, and welcome to the first... Korean Literature Podcast. Uh, I am Charles Montgomery, this is Barry Welsh, and we will be your hosts for the next year as we discuss all issues concerning Korean literature. And those of you, I think we have two followers already, your father yes, and my mother, right. uh -huh, uh -huh. and because they're smart they probably notice that this is video. But there will probably be sometimes it is just a podcast. All right, that's right, yes. So uh -huh. we'll call it a podcast for you now. You don't need to see us all yeah, the time. I'm sure right. you might want to. As handsome as we are, yes. as handsome as we are. <laughs> and so uh, this first vidcast, we're just going to introduce ourselves and talk a little bit about what it is we intend to do, why a 54-year-old from California would be in Korea in a translation department, working in a translation department, reading Korean literature and translation, mm -hmm. why an Irishman who lives in Scotland, whose last name is Welsh, <laughs> would be doing a very similar thing. Yes. And uh -huh. uh, I, in a way, what you could, to the one way to think about us is we hope over the next year and, and or longer to be the Siskel and Ebert of Korean literature, mm. albeit the alive Siskel. That's right, the, yes. Uh -huh. Alive. Ebert. Or you could say we're the Simon and Martina of Korean literature. Yes, right? for yeah. anyone who's uh -huh. a fan of Eat Your Kimchi, mm -hmm. although the question of which one of us is Martina is open. Uh, really? I th <laughs> I'm curvier, but you're prettier. <laughs> <Okay>. So <laughs> we'll leave that for you, okay, yes, for uh -huh. you the, the, the watcher, to decide. I'm sure uh, Simon and Martina will be overjoyed <laughs> that we've even mentioned their name on our vidcast. And so what we thought we'd do initially, we're just going to do a couple sec segments here today. The first segment is just going to be introduction mm -hmm. and uh, talk a little bit about Korean literature. And the reason my interest in Korean literature began with a, a series of questions that uh, popped into my mind. And uh, Barry, we've talked about this before. Mm -hmm. You're being from uh, Scotland, yep. not really having known that much about Korea or having met very many Koreans when you were in Scotland. That's right. There's not a, really a very big Korea presence in Scotland at all. I don't think there's no Korean restaurants. And um, just until maybe the last five years, people have watched Korean movies. And I honestly, I don't think I met any Korean people in Scotland. Yeah, and so where I came from was a little bit differently. It was a little bit different because I was in California, and California mm -hmm. has two rather substantial uh, Korea towns: one in mm -hmm. Los Angeles that's world famous, and a smaller one in Santa Clara. And my best friend uh, in California was Korean. But I was thinking about things Korean and all Korean, and uh, uh, these questions arose in my mind, and they were questions that I could ask somebody from most any country. And the questions were about representations of the yeah. country, and the first question I would ask that most people might know the answer to is what is the representative drink of Korea? Well I'm now very well acquainted with the representative Korean drink and it is of course soju, right? Yes, um, and I have thoughtfully, for those of you who live overseas and may never have seen it, bought a bottle of soju and soju is drunk from a small glass like this, half of which I'll drink and half of which I'm pouring out for Kim In Hoon, a great Korean author who just died this year. Mm -hmm. So uh, most of the world, with respect to alcohol or drinks, would say, "Okay, soju, Korean." Yeah. What would they say? Food. Food. If I say Korean food, what's the first thing that? Comes well, of to your course, mind? it's a world famous kimchi. Right. Is the representative Korean food. And of course, uh -huh. also because I care for those of you who may or may not have seen it, <laughs> I have some kimchi here, fermented, absolutely delicious. Some people don't like it. Uh, I love it. It's an acquired taste. My wife uh, came to Korea and did not like it, mm -hmm. and now first thing she tries whenever we go out for a meal, because if you eat at a lot of Korean restaurants, you can kind of get a feel for how good the Korean restaurant is going to be by how it's Oh, from the is. quality of the kimchi? Kimchi. I, see, I never knew and that. So before. we're talking about the Olympics, actually. We're doing this at the time of the Olympics. Mm -hmm. what when you think of Koreans in the Olympics, what do you think of? Well, wonderful uh, Queen of the Ice, Kim Yuna. Absolutely. Kim uh, Yuna, mm -hmm. for 12 years, has been basically dominated. Uh, 
the ice skating. But if I, if we were at a party and we were strangers and mm. we were trying to impress each other with our knowledge of yeah, literature uh -huh. and we were challenging each other, <laughs> who's your favorite American author? Um, well, just now I've been reading some John Irving, so let me say John Irving. Okay, and um, you would ask me... Uh, yeah, who's your favorite British writer? Um, probably Tom Sharp, a comic oh, writer okay. who wrote for yeah. many years, and yeah. also actually just year, died last year. Mm. Although going back in, in time, I suppose the real answer would be Shakespeare, who mm. I love okay. and adore. Mm. However, we would get to that point where we were struggling for countries, and either one of us could have asked the other, who is your favorite Korean author? Yeah, and I, I would have no answer. I would, I would sneak away. I, hey, look, there's my friend. I need to go talk to him. I would sneak away. Yeah. Uh -huh. And so it occurred to me that people just did not know about Korean literature, mm -hmm. and I started to wonder why. And I came up with a couple of reasons. One is it is difficult because it's extremely national. Yeah. It's tied. It can be difficult to get into. Uh, the other is it's oftentimes not published outside of Korea. That's true, uh huh, yes. And did you ever see a Korean book when you were outside? Uh, I don't remember ever hearing about Korean literature in when I lived in Britain, and so no. I right, and the it. only thing that I had heard of, I had heard of Lee Min Yo's Our Twisted Hero, ah, okay. which was okay. being taught in some schools. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So we kind of shared this interest in why, in literature in general, and why things, why Korean literature wasn't better known, and so that's what we're going to talk about uh, for the next year. With that said, I think it's time that we introduce ourselves so you know a little bit better who you're actually dealing with, and I will let pearls go before swine. <laughs> Barry, introduce yourself. All right. Uh, so my name is Barry Welsh, and I've been living here for, I guess, about four years now. And like Charles said, so I'm originally from Scotland, and I lived in England for a while. I studied in England, and I went back to Scotland to do my master's degree. And I teach here at a women's university. I teach some wonderful young women at Sumyang Women's University here in Seoul. And for the past two and a half, three years, I've been organizing, I guess, literary events, yeah, you know, sort of yeah. writer events, offer events. And I invite Korean writers and international writers to come and uh, meet an audience and give a presentation and uh, get interviewed on stage and just kind of interact with a relatively small audience. And we'll um, talk more about this because if you are someone right, yeah. who's watching us in mm -hmm. Seoul, you absolutely should be coming to see these things. We've had yeah, such yeah. great authors as Kim, Kim Young Ha, uh, Hwang Sun Mi, and uh, Jo Kyung Ran. Yeah, I mean, soon. Yeah. just yeah. really, really great speakers come to this thing. But we'll talk about that more as we go further down the road. Yeah, and that's essentially that's what I do. I do a little bit of writing some places, and I've done some sort of broadcasting for talking about literature in other places. And maybe we can talk about more of those later in the coming weeks, I guess, sometimes. And um, yeah, that's about it. I'm really interested in Korean literature. Uh, my background was in studying uh, English literature at university. Uh, I don't know quite as much about Korean literature as Charles, but I'm, I'm certainly a fan and, and looking to find out more on this journey with, with everyone Absolutely. out there. Yeah? So, uh, like Barry, I teach at, uh, in Korea and I teach at Dongguk University, whose colors I proudly wear. <laughs> <laughs> when it, you know, when it's not as cold as it I is. don't have one of those because mine says women's university on it. it would just, look, yeah, it might yeah, be a bit uh -huh. strange. Mm -hmm. Might be a bit strange. And uh, I, guys, as I said, I, I, I was, I had had some small introduction to Korean culture when I was in California, but I met my best friend Ed Park in California, and he brought me to Korea twice, and he introduced me to Korean literature because he was a translator, and it was meeting him that sparked that question in my mm -hmm. mind: Why did I not know a single Korean mm -hmm. author's mm -hmm. name? So uh, when it became time to leave my soul-sucking marketing job in the United States, I decided <laughs> that would be a good opportunity to come over here. I proposed marriage to my wife, who's from the U.S. and is currently on vacation, but mm -hmm. will eventually drag her in front of the camera. She's a bit shy. And I came here and I work in the Dongguk uh, English Linguistics Interpretation and Translation Department. And I work on a project basis with uh, the... Korean Literature Translation Institute. Mm, yeah, uh -huh. Both Barry and I, obviously, as you can see, are very interested in social networking ways yes. of communicating uh -huh. knowledge, particularly about literature and Korean literature. So that is what we're going to be doing for the next year. We're going to take a quick break uh, so that I can finish this bottle of soju and this <laughs> bowl of kimchi. And when we come back, we're just going to talk very briefly about what it is we intend to do for the next year and we would like to say now and we'll say again that if you as a watcher or listener have any suggestions please contact us at the 
uh, email address you see at the bottom of the screen, charles at ktlit.com. Here. here. Yeah, yeah uh -huh. maybe I'll put it here, maybe <laughs> there. And um, that address will be changing when we get our website, our mutual yeah. website put up. But for now, that's your way to contact us. We're off to finish the soju, finish the kimchi, and we'll come back and we'll tell you what the next year is going to be like. Okay. Cheers. Empty. We failed. Of <laughs> time eleven. Okay. <laughs> we're back, and as usual, during the break, we didn't do anything productive at all. No. Uh, but we're going to talk a little bit about what we're going to be doing on this show uh, in the year. I made some tea. Oh yes. Uh, actually, that's not fair at all. We did do productive things. Yes. Uh -huh. I checked to make sure that this time the sound was on on the camera. Uh huh. And very then we made some tea. Uh -huh. So yeah. Charles is on the soju, and I'm I'm civilized, so I'm drinking green tea. Civilized <laughs> green tea. That's from, listen. Here's what I would say. This is from an empire that used to be. This is from an empire that's coming. Uh, rising to your I see. world. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, so what are we going to do? Well, we're going to do kind of the things you'd expect that we're going to do. We're going to do book reviews mm -hmm. on this. We're going to do a lot of book reviews, and part of the reason we're going to do book reviews is because. Particularly for someone who's beginning to read Korean literature, yep. mm -hmm. you can make some bad choices. Yeah, there's some not so easy things to start with, and there's some more accessible ways in, right? Can you think, I can think of it right now as I sit here, but can you think of a book, a Korean book that you read that particularly stymied you that you were given early? Oh, right. Actually, well, the first Korean book in translation I read was Kim Young ha uh, I Have the Right to Destroy Myself. Which is? It's a great, yeah, it's a fantastic book, but it is a bit of a strange book, it's kind of a postmodern novel and it is very unusual and so it's definitely not everybody's cup of tea but he is still I think one of the more accessible sort of ways in, right? He's one of the more Yeah, he is, yeah. he is. And you know, we'll, we'll, later on we'll talk about that. We'll talk about the fact that there's a tension within Korea's literary community about what accessibility means. If yeah. you're accessible to foreigners, mm -hmm. does mm -hmm. it mean you're in some way betraying uh, the Koreanness of fiction? Right, yes. uh -huh. Uh, I, on the other hand, had a really unfortunate uh, experience. I was handed a book called Three Generations by Yang Song Sok, which yeah, uh -huh, is uh -huh. basically as big as the Oxford English Dictionary. Yeah, uh -huh. it's, it's thick. Uh, yeah, it's a really thick book. Maybe it's ch chunky like this. Chunky yeah. like that. And I could not understand it at all. Yeah. And uh, uh, many different problems. The names were similar because, yeah. you know, Korean family uh, names tend okay, to be similar yeah, uh -huh. through generations. But it was also about stuff I didn't understand. So we're going to talk about the books that you should read, if you're interested in Korean culture, the books that will start you in understanding Korean culture. And then if you go, you know, one out of every 100 Alice's goes down the rabbit hole, <laughs> yeah, I was that Alice, you may become that Alice, yeah. you may not be. So we'll do some reviews of novels. We'll also talk about there's a remarkable amount of Korean literature that is available for free. Yes, uh -huh. there's some great websites. There's Charles' website and uh, there's a famous translator, Brother Anthony and Son Jae, uh, who's an Englishman actually. Right? Yes. Yeah, so he's from English, but he's a law uh, England. He's a long time resident of, of Korea and he's got an amazing website that has lots of free short stories. Right? And if we become popular, we will drive. Brother, yes. we'll talk to him. He's a very, very interesting man. Uh, we'll also talk about specific authors, and this is something yeah. that maybe Barry's going to uh, contribute to a bit more because of what he does with his Ten Magazine book club. Um, for instance, just as we tape yesterday, Huang Sun Mi, the author of uh, the Hen Who Dreamed She Could Fly, and it's her, her first book in English. She's written over 40 children's books, but this is the first one that's been translated into English. She's been translated into other languages, so French and Indonesian and some other languages. Lots of his Southeast Asian yeah, languages, yeah. she said. Lots of uh, and, but this is the first one in English, and I think the Korean book publishing world has got high hopes for it. Uh, she's going to the London Book Fair next month to promote it with some other Korean writers. I guess right. we should mention that soon. Um, but yeah, so we'll maybe sometimes we'll devote some time to talking about a specific writer and their body of work and what's available in English and what's available for free and um, yeah, maybe even sometimes get them in for an interview. Maybe. Who knows? Hey, uh, we do that. We have we've got to find a studio. I don't think I can bring them to my house. Uh, imagine, if you will, behind that wall is my bathroom, because imagine is all you want to do. Uh, in any case, so we're going to do that. We're also mm -hmm. going to do some visits. There are really. Korea, it's taken Korea as a nation a little while to get around to seeing this and doing this. 
but they've started creating uh, literary museums for some of their better yeah. authors, and I've been to many of them. We'll, we'll take you on visits there. We'll also talk about events, um, events both inside Korea and outside Korea, because yeah. as Barry mentioned, for instance, in London, there's going to be a ton of events this spring. In New York, there are always events. Mm -hmm. There are events. Barry is working right now on the Paju International Children's Film Festival. Uh, and book, book Festival. Book Children's Festival. Book Festival. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, next Damn month... Damn you, Soju! <laughs> yeah. He had a couple in between. Bottles! Yeah. <laughs> uh, so next month is the uh, Paju City Children's Book Festival. Uh, it's been going for several years, but this is the first year that they're trying, beginning to try and attract an international audience and get people outside of Korea interested in it. And uh, lots of these amazing, um, you know, Korean children's book writers will be there. And it's a huge event here in Korea. So thousands and thousands of families go uh, with their children and visit and meet these authors and go to readings and take part in sort of drawing illustration activities. And yeah, so maybe we can even go and visit Paju and um, yeah, it's yeah. an interesting thing. Paju, a, an entire city created by the government, yeah, uh, solely to create and publish and distribute books. Yeah. So there's a lot of interesting stuff going on here right now, that's what we're trying to tell you. Uh, and again, the other thing we'd like to mention is if you are somebody who is watching this and is, who is interested, we kind of live in a little, a sort of a bubble here in Korea. We live within the Korean literature circle, mm -hmm. and it's a relatively small group of authors, relatively small group of people. With respect to people who are interested on the translation side, it's a small world. So if you have any questions, please feel free to send them in. We'll be happy to flash your picture up, um, yeah. <laughs> as long as you're good-looking. We'll be happy, and, but we know that all of our watchers are yes. good-looking uh -huh. and intelligent. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And we'll answer your questions. We'll do some research and we'll find out. Yeah, yeah we'll, we actually, we'll yeah. be the Yahoo Answers of <laughs> Korean literature. Um, should also mention that we may talk a little bit about films, because Barry is branching out into films, and in many cases, Korean films are based on Korean That's right, literature. yeah. So there's a big overlap in the sort of classic Korean films and the Korean literature. So some of these great writers like Lee Moon-yeol and uh, Hwang Seok Young and uh, even Gong Ji Young and Kim Young Ha. So lots of these Korean writers have these really amazing films that have been adapted from their novels, adapted from their short stories. So you have sort of these great Korean auteurs and then these um, great sort of writers and um, often they've made some really fascinating, really interesting films and so starting next month there'll be sort of free screenings that you can go to or you can hear about. In Seoul. Yeah, yeah. And, but lots of these movies are available free online, so maybe we can point Oh, this is another thing we'll yeah. talk about, yeah, yeah. That, the, that the Korean Film Archive yeah. has put yeah. online very, very many movies yeah. for free mm -hmm. that have, are based on novels of that time. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. a, what, what, basically what we're promising you is a lot of interesting stuff. Uh, I guess we'll just hop into, normally there would be another uh, section break here, but I think we'll just hop into okay. sort of uh, recommendations and closing, because this, as I said, this is introductory. Um, the next time I think we're going to talk about a couple of things for sure. Uh, I think we'll talk a little bit about going back to that idea of where you can start in Korean literature. We'll start with one of the first collections of short stories individually boxed, the Jimundong LTI uh -huh. Korea stories, okay. uh, which are really worth looking at. And as I said yesterday, there was a uh, Barry conducted a really amazing interview with Hwang Sun Mi. Oh, thank you very much, Doc. No, you you were really good. I was surprised. <laughs> I feel like I'm out of a job. Um, and uh, Hwang Sun Mi was very funny and very open. Yep. And if you are someone who likes fables, if you are someone who likes children's stories, mm -hmm. and if you want to hear a very intensely moving personal story behind yeah. this book, yeah. uh -huh. which we heard yesterday, uh, you will hear that. You can also find us on the web. You can find me at www.ktlit.com. We hope in two weeks when we post the next one of these, we will have the Seoul ABC yes, the website. Yes, Seoul ABC website, uh-huh. Yes. So under, we... under construction at the moment. <laughs> right, 46th consecutive <laughs> month. So but not, not very <laughs> Korean. If you live in Korea, you're used to construction being something like a reverse earthquake. There's just a pile of stuff, and then three days yeah, later, uh -huh. there's a building. Right. It's getting there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's getting there. It's getting there. So uh, that's what we look forward to offering you. 
And we look forward to getting feedback from you. Mm -hmm. We will, oh, and I should also say that some of the other things that we're going to be doing on the sites, uh, because this will go back and forth between Seoul, ABC, and KTLIT, depending, is I will also be doing my 300 seconds. There will be probably podcasts and shorter videos and things like that. So by all means, check out the pages. Mm -hmm. When we come back in two weeks, we'll be able to give you much more specificity about those pages. With that said, Barry, are any we, last words? Are we going to do some recommendations? Uh, you want to do a recommendation? Do yes. a recommendation, then I'll do a recommendation. Okay, so I have one recommendation. This is for uh, a great short story, which I think is a good way to start, a good place to start reading um, Korean literature. And there's a free film adaptation of the short story available online as well. And the short story is The Road to Sam Po by Hwang Sok Yong. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's quite a representative, we mentioned representationality, and it's quite a representative Korean story. It was written in the early 1970s, I think it's set in the early 1970s. At a time of great economic yeah. change in mm-hmm. Korea, great economic change and dislocation. Yeah, and so it's very interesting, it gives a great insight into that period in Korean history. Uh, it's a very easy to read, accessible story, but if you delve into the background and the history around it, it's a very rich story as well and there's a fantastic incredible film that's available for free online with English subtitles um, called The Road to Sampo directed by Iman He, I think it's directed uh, maybe. by. Maybe, yeah. and that's on the KFA website, yeah. the mm-hmm. Korean Film Archive website. Yeah, and they, and have, they have a YouTube channel. A YouTube channel, yeah. and unless yeah. I'm incredibly lazy, by the time post-production is done with that, there will be a URL right oh, here okay, okay, that yeah. will lead you to that thing. So it's a great short story to read, and I think you can get a relatively cheap copy online, right? Yes, you can. Yeah, okay. can. And then you can watch the film for free and that's you started. That's you on your way, right? Excellent. Yeah. And my recommendation, as my recommendation always is, Soju, <laughs> come bae. <laughs> Thanks. We'll see you in two weeks. Take care. That was fun. Yeah, that was okay. Should be, if, uh, as long as the film's good.